For our leadership discovery project, it's been fun to reflect a little bit on the stuff that we've learned in our class and also some of the personal takeaways I've had from this course. Um, as I've reflected on the questions listed on our assignment description, it's been a fun moment of introspection on what I've learned and also what I have planned for the future. Um, the first question is, what is my vision for me? Um, for another class this semester, I was given the assignment to put together my own uh, personal mission statement. Um, that was a really insightful assignment. I hadn't previously thought about giving myself a personal mission statement, but what I came up with in that class proved to be a really effectful, uh, impactful and effective summary of what I hope for my life, which is my mission is to create an environment where compassion, kindness, and respect can abound wherever uh, and with whomever I come in contact with. Through discipline and integrity, I will always be someone that my family, friends, and colleagues can depend on. That's my vision for me, whether that be in my family setting as a husband and father, whether that be as an employee, as a student, um, in volunteer work, that's what I hope to be. I hope to be someone that people can depend on and I hope to create an environment where people uh, can feel compassion, kindness, and respect because I think those are the things that people need most in order to thrive. Um, as far as the leadership theories that resonated most with me and my goals, in a positive aspect, I would say that the thing that resonated with me would be adaptive leadership theory. I really liked learning about adaptive leadership theory and about how leaders have this responsibility to prepare their employees or their followers for the changes that are going to come. I especially like this in our ever turbulent world where it seems like the, the old adage that the only thing that's constant is change is becoming truer and truer. Um, I think it's especially with developing technologies and uh, the way that we work changing, especially think about two years ago when the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic first started, um, everyone just had to kind of uproot and figure it out on the fly to move to remote work or work with masks or change the way that we work. Um, ultimately, I believe that that adaptive leaders and the adaptive leadership theory that took place there is what led to the successes and the lack thereof is what led to a lot of the failures. Um, in a negative context, and what I hope to avoid moving forward is transactional leadership. Uh, I think I realized that transactional leadership and how leaders will basically just play the quid pro quo game of I'll do this for you if you do this for me is far more common than I would care to admit. Um, that's something I hope to avoid in the companies that I work for in the future and also just um, as I become a leader in the future. I, I hope that I would never be considered to be a transactional leader. As far as how my goals are manifest, I would say that my goals, at least in the past and how I think they will continue to be manifest in the future, are through three basic things. One, my goals are manifest through hard work. Two, they're manifest through detailed goal planning. And three, through diligent determination. Um, hard work, I feel, and determination, diligent determination, as I'm talking about here, kind of connect in the way that you can be diligent and determined, but not work hard. Uh, and what will happen is you're just going to constantly be doing something at a low level of effort. And in vice versa, you can work really hard, but not be determined in how often you do it. Through that planning process and combining hard work and determination and, di and that diligence, that's how my goals are going to become manifest in the future. How I'm becoming myself is the next question. I think it's interesting as you talk about character and personality that nobody has one set concrete personality 
to what they are from the day that they're born to what they are when they ultimately pass away. I think people's personality is constantly changing and shifting and becoming something different from year after year after year. I can say that that's the same for me. I'm definitely not the same person that I was in, in high school or junior high. Um, as my priorities have changed, so has my personality. I used to be far more outgoing and all about go with the flow, go do uh, as many social gatherings as you can. But since um, getting married and becoming a father, it's it's different now. And I would say I'm a little bit more serious. A little, I, I still like to have fun, but that idea of going out and just enjoying myself is no longer as appealing to me. And that's one of the things that I think about as I have thought about this idea of becoming myself. Um, and I hope to continue to emulate the people that I admire most and just become what they have been for me. As I think about my mentors, as I think about the leaders in my life that I have really enjoyed interacting with, I hope to just emulate some of those traits and become a little bit more like them and thus become the best version of myself. The next question is, am I enjoying the process of becoming? And I would say yes, absolutely. I'm enjoying this process of becoming myself or, you know, the best version of myself. Um, I especially enjoy this idea of comparing myself to where I was two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, and then thinking about what's what's to come in the next five years or in the next two years. Um, I know there's the old adage, you know, comparison is a thief of joy. I think that's more when you're comparing yourself to others. As I compare myself to my own progress and where I used to be, I actually find a great deal of enjoyment and satisfaction in doing that. Um, and now the last question is, if I was to seek out a leader to follow, who would it be and why? I love sports. I especially love football and basketball. So the leader that I would choose to follow is Greg Popovich. I'm not a Spurs fan by any means, but what he has done for the San Antonio Spurs is pretty remarkable. And the example of steadfastness that he has been for their franchise is, is really remarkable. Um, some of the things that I have really enjoyed about his leadership style is one, he is not one to take the credit. He doesn't want the attention. He's notorious in press conferences where people are, where beat writers and all of those types of reporters are notorious for trying to get those uh, high traffic, get clicks type quotes from report from coaches and players to stir it up and get some attention on their articles. Coach Popovich is not one for the attention. He is notorious for giving one, two word answers and focusing solely on his, his team, his group. Um, he makes everything about the team. He, he's notorious, also, you know, well known for not taking on these star players that like to make it about themselves. He is all about where can this player fit best within my team and what's going to help our team to succeed, even if it's not a popular or flashy move. And then steadfastness in trials and tribulation. He has been a part of some amazing teams and also in recent years, a part of some teams that are not very good at all. Coach Popovich is the same and the standard that he holds for his team is, is a constant for his franchise. Thanks for listening to my answers to these questions. I hope it's been enlightening to hear what I've taken most from this um, from this course, because it certainly was enlightening for me to reflect on the questions listed in our assignment description.